Question, what is the minimum PPM of H2 needed to be therapeutic? What up all my extra minute peeps? Thank you for voting on this month's Q&A poll. I really appreciate it. Uh, please continue to participate with us because I'm always down for answering more questions for you. So this month's Q&A uh, winner uh, is, what is the minimum PPM of H2 needed to be therapeutic? Now this question is super broad. Um, and so we're gonna have to kind of um, define it some more uh, because that minimum could be for let's say animal models or let's say for human models and so i'm gonna go ahead and answer the question in a few parts and kind of hopefully uh give you a clear answer of what you're actually looking for by by the end of this video all right so first and foremost i went through my hydrogen database and found a source discussing the lowest ppms used in hydrogen studies uh, and so i have this source up here right behind me uh, and they actually discuss that the lowest use in animal models is about 0.08 ppm and the lowest use in a human model is about 0.048 ppm. Now, uh, these ppms or these concentrations don't really tell us a whole lot. Um, and this is what I'm going to explain further in the actual video. PPM is just only one aspect uh, uh, and can be rather irrelevant if you're not considering the volume of water that's being consumed so you really can't understand fully how much hydrogen is actually being uh, ingested or being uh, circulated through the body uh, but just for reference just to let you guys know what is the lowest ppm uh, that has uh, that is in the literature that i have access to is 0 0.08 ppm and 0 0.048 ppm for humans uh, now let's go ahead and move on uh, to the second part of this question. All right, so as to the second part, as I was discussing just previously, uh, you need to consider um, not just the concentration or the PBM, but also the volume consumed so that you can actually understand how much hydrogen you really are ingesting when it comes to hydrogen rich water. We have a whole video on this topic discussing PPMs or concentration and actual milligrams of hydrogen consumed uh, when considering hydrogen rich water. So I would uh, highly advise you go watch that video to understand uh, this point more uh, fully. But with that being considered, uh, the research is suggesting that we consume about one to three milligrams of H2 per day. And so uh, you can see throughout the literature, uh, the hydrogen studies by and large, when it comes to hydrogen water studies, uh, they're administering this uh, between one to three milligrams of H2 per day. And the lowest that we actually have, that I actually have in my database um, regarding this is about 0 0.5 milligrams of hydrogen per day. And this study that I have right up here behind me, they actually administered about 0 0.5 uh, to about 0 0.7 milligrams of hydrogen per day. Okay. So in order to understand this further, let's go ahead and do an example real quick so you can get this uh, concept in your mind. So let's say we have uh, one liter, 33.8 ounces um, of water. And let's say that water contains 0 0.5 ppm or milligrams per liter of H2, dissolved hydrogen gas. If a person were to consume that one liter of water, they would have consumed 0 0.5 milligrams of hydrogen. This is what we're discussing when we talk about PPMs and when we're talking about the volume. It's so that you can actually see how much milligrams of hydrogen you are uh, ingesting or how, how much they're actually administering. And so uh, what we see in the studies, which this study right behind me, like I said, they administered about 0 0.5 to about 0 0.7 ppm of hydrogen gas. And they noticed that hydrogen had beneficial effects for our autonomic nervous system. So that is what they discovered in this study. Now let's move forward in this discussion of answering this question. So as I was discussing, the research is suggesting about one to three milligrams of H2 per day appears to be therapeutic for humans. So I'm gonna give you a quick example of some literature, of some of the literature uh, showing the milligrams that they're actually administering to people. 
So in this study, um, this is with cyclists, it's an exercise study, but they actually administer about three milligrams per day. And in this study, they administer 1.2 milligrams of H2 per day to healthy individuals and notice benefits such as reduction in inflammation and cellular death. And lastly, in this study, which is a high intensity exercise study, they administer more than five milligrams of H2 per day uh, to these individuals and noticed tremendous effects when it came to um, maintaining their antioxidant capacity. Therefore, you guys get to see that these three examples show that they're ministering a range around one to three milligrams or more of H2 per day. Uh, and these particular H2 water studies had concentrations or PPMs ranging anywhere from 0.8 or 1.2 all the way to above 5 ppm of hydrogen dissolved into the water. So this is by and large what is being administered to humans and showing therapeutic benefits. Last part of the question, let's go. Lastly, let's go ahead and summarize what we discussed so far. The lowest PPM I've seen in the literature, which is a hemodialysis study, used 0.048 PPM uh, in that study, which is a human study. Now, that is a very low PPM, but considering we do not know the volume, we don't have access to how much hydrogen those people actually receive. Therefore, I wanted to discuss the reality that PPM, apart from volume, is rather irrelevant. So, we move forward and discuss that the reality is research is using one to three, or seeing that one to three milligrams of H2 per day uh, is demonstrating therapeutic effects for humans, which one to three milligrams obviously would consider the concentration and the volume in those studies to actually know how much they're receiving. Lastly, we got to see that by and large with human studies, the lowest milligrams that they administer is around 0.3 to about 0.5 milligrams of H2 per day. Uh, and this can kind of function as a bare minimum for us. Uh, this can also be uh, validated and corroborated by the International Hydrogen Standard Association, uh, which is a scientific which is a scientific organization uh, that is that looks over the literature and makes standards um, for hydrogen products to be therapeutic to humans. And they suggest that 0.5 ppm with drinking at least one liter of water per day may provide therapeutic benefits uh, to humans. So we can consider 0.5 ppm with consuming at least one liter of water more of a minimum or a maintenance dose uh, for hydrogen. Um, but by and large, one to three milligrams per day is what's seen in the literature to provide therapeutic benefits. So that's what would be my answer, it would be 0.5 ppm or milligrams per liter or concentration with consuming at least one liter of water per day is the minimum dose anyone should be striving for. Therefore, if the H2 concentration of the water is less than 0.5 ppm, that hydrogen rich water is questionable about its therapeutic potential. Um, you can offset this possibly by drinking more water, right? So you can drink 0.5 ppm and drink two liters of water, right? 60, 67 ounces uh, and get one milligram of hydrogen, which is good. Um, but if it's less than 0.5 ppm, eventually at some point, it's not gonna be very practical. You have to drink so much water to even get close to what is being used in these studies. So 0.5 ppm will be my answer to that question. I feel like I needed to do a lot of um, uh, legwork when it comes to this question because that's a very broad question. And for us to actually make sense of it, for us who are actually trying to consume hydrogen-rich water, I needed to give some background information as to uh, my answer and why, I, and why I would answer it this way. So hear me clearly, 0.5 ppm uh, functions more as a minimum, 0.5 ppm uh, consuming at least one liter a day uh, functions more as a minimum or a maintenance dose of hydrogen. Uh, you should strive for more than that, at least one to three. And if you can get more than that, you can get more. Um, the higher the H2 concentration, uh, the better. Because as I have explained in previous videos, we really don't have much data for H2 and proper dosage for every disease model. 
Um, right now, what we have is more of a consensus around what appears to be therapeutic. And in fact, H2 seems to be dose dependent. So each disease model may have a different dose. Um, so a certain disease model might actually receive therapeutic, therapeutic benefits um, receiving one milligram of H2 a day, while another one may need four milligrams of H2 a day uh, to be able to um, exert or induce therapeutic effects for that disease model. So this is why it's very important to try to aim for one to three milligrams per day or more. Uh, like I said, the higher the H2 concentration, um, the better in the water, um, the higher the H2 concentration with a decent volume of a liter to two liters of water per day, the better. Um, the more milligrams of H2 you're actually gonna ingest. And that's a surefire way of ensuring that you are giving yourself the best possible chances to induce therapeutic effects while consuming hydrogen-rich water. Thank you for voting on this month's Q&A poll. Um, I really appreciate all my h people uh, that are out there. And like I said, I'm excited to be able to do these Q&As monthly and to be answering your questions. Uh, so please continue to vote on these. Um, go ahead and follow us on all of our social media platforms. Um, and if you like the content, please consider uh, donating. Uh, the donation link is going to be in the description or uh, you can always sign up uh, to our Patreon account and you can support us monthly for uh, the information that we're trying to put out here. Other than that, uh, we're going to catch you next month. Uh, please vote on that Q&A poll and we'll see you there. Deuces.